So today I wanted to talk about um, an option for the third generation Camaro and then later on for the fourth generation Camaro that I've always kind of liked. The option is B4C, which was a special service package, i.e. police car, highway patrol car, but we'll call it police car. So it's actually a really rare option. They started in 1991 and um, they did 592 of them in 1991 and then uh, 589 of them in 1992 before moving on. Like I said, they carried it on into the fourth gen. But particularly the third gen is the one I'll talk about today. Um, but before that, so I, I'm, I don't know this to be a fact, and also, you know, I don't claim to be an expert about the RPO itself. Um, that being said, I got to imagine this kind of stemmed from uh, before that, in the late 70s, early 80s, the California Highway Patrol was using Camaro Z28s as highway patrol cars in California. Um, that wasn't an official thing back then, and to my knowledge, they did like 20 of them or something. Um, so they weren't very common. There was only a few to go around. However, um, later on at the and, and later on in the third generation of Camaros, GM decided to build a special service package. Now, what I've always liked about this particular package is it's got that that uh, sheep's a, a sheep and wolf or a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? So it's it's uh, it was only available on RS trim. So the difference being you're missing the 91 and 92 hood louvers. You're missing the 91 and 92 um, high back spoiler. Um, it looks just like an RS going down the street. Could be a 3.1 V6 for all you know. However, underneath is actually a lot of Z28 pinnings. Specifically, um, obviously you could get an RS with a 305. However, um, you could you know, be thumped on the head on the street if you came up on one that turns out it was a 350, which was an option for the B4C. So uh, again, what I've always thought was kind of cool about this particular package is it is a, a, uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, it's a, it's a Z28, but we'll call it a Z28 with RS accoutrement on the outside. Now with the package, you got the you know the RS but you got the four wheel disc you got the dual cat converters you got the high ramp alternator I suppose you know that is in a high and a higher cranking amp battery I suppose that's probably because of all the electronics um, you could delete out the radio it can, it did come with a radio but you could delete it for a little bit of money back on on your uh, as a credit um, you could get uh, well, the package itself came with a limited slip axle. It came with um, special suspension. That's all it really says. Now, a little confusion, um, even for me personally, when researching them a long time ago, is the later ones came with, uh, on, the, on the RPO sticker, it says 1LE. So people automatically assume that it is a you know, B4C, 1LE, um, i.e., you know, the road race car, right? Now, again, I don't claim to be an expert. Um, however, what I could find on it tells me that there was a little bit of back and forth a long time ago about whether the B4Cs actually came with all of the 1LE features, i.e., the, the uh, G92, and the thicker sway bars, the better, you know, just in general, the 1LE suspension. Um, particularly, did it come with the 1LE specific gas tank? Um, did it come with the 1LE specific, um, I think the RPO is SG1 um, drive shaft. To my knowledge, again, for the third time, I do not claim to be an expert on, on that particular subject. To my knowledge, they did not come with all of the 1LE features. I think that 1LE box is triggered because you are basically triggering the four-wheel disc with the, um, I guess, the to use quotations, the Corvette-style 
front brakes. Um, anyway, the long story short is there's two reasons of why why I've always kind of liked this package. Again, because of the uh, the sleeper idea of the car, um, at least as it pertains to, I guess maybe being a highway patrolman. Even though you know you got all the lights, you're not really being a sleeper. But um, on the you know at the drag strip, you look like you're lining up next to a base 305 or hell even a V6 Camaro. Well, it turns out it was a 350 automatic car, which is a little bit faster. Um, also, you if you option it accordingly, which unfortunately the three it wouldn't be with the 350, but if you option it accordingly, you have a 305, you have a manual transmission, and then you have a deleted out radio, you have four wheel disc brakes, and then you have the standard on the package engine oil cooler. You've got you a nice little track day toy. Um, that may not be the fastest, but it would be better equipped to run around a road course than say a 350 automatic, you know, with a, you know that would be um, would be subject to overheating the transmission on the road course um, without having to check the box for the official road course toy that would end up, especially nowadays, being more expensive. So anyway, uh, long story short. The, that's a little backstory on the B4C Camaro. I've always liked them because, you know, you kind of, like I said, you get that little sleeper value. Or um, if you're lucky enough to find one, or if you were lucky enough to find one at a police auction where they're, they're dang near giving them away, um, you had you a pretty fun little road course toy or a pretty fun, you know, um, like a sleeper drag car, uh, drag strip car. So. That's, that's a little bit of the backstory on the B4C Camaro. There are tons of awesome options out there. I highly recommend um, checking out on Instagram a guy named Kurt K. Photo on Instagram. He's got one. It is an immaculate specimen of a B4C car. And, um, <clears throat> you know, do a little research on them. I think they're really cool cars. So, uh, you know, see you next time.